Hey guys, John Jackson here with Pro Edge Paintball. Today I've got the Lux TM40 and I've got the infamous TM40 Nighthawk trigger. I'm gonna show you how to install it and show you different color options and we'll talk about the trigger a little bit. So the Lux has always come with a very similar trigger. It's kind of like this sleek, uh, I don't even know what it's called. Not a blade trigger, so it's not flat, but it's like a reverse curve trigger. And it's pretty nice. Infamous has really stepped up over the last couple of years in making different triggers. So the new Nighthawk trigger, I installed this just to see what it felt like, and I genuinely really like this trigger. So I'm a, usually a big fan of the Deuce trigger, which is the double, basically two finger spot here. I threw it in a gun and see what it felt like, and I really liked it. So today I'm gonna show you how to install it and then show you kind of how to adjust the trigger to at least to get it to where how, how I like it. So first things first, go ahead and take off your barrel and you're gonna need your 1 16th Allen key. So it's gonna be a standard size 1 16th Allen key. Should do everything you need it to do today. All right, on the left side of your Lux, uh, they should have snap grips or snap screws. So you should be, able, should be able to stick your finger underneath the front here and pop it open. It's gonna open up. And then I usually tuck these grips right behind the trigger frame there. Today I'm gonna put the blue Actually, let's see what, uh, let's do the red one. So on the left side of your frame here, you can see that there is a small Allen key. That's all you're gonna need to take out. Take your Allen key in there, and it shouldn't be extremely tight. There are two O-rings on this screw. So once you get it out to a certain point, it'll actually stop unscrewing, but it'll stay stuck in there. So I usually take my fingernail and kind of pinch it between my two fingers, something like that. It's got two O-rings on there to keep it from just randomly unscrewing uh, as you're playing with it. So go ahead and lay that off to the side. So you're gonna take the trigger and it's gonna to try to slide just forwards, which you wanna do. So I'm gonna take the front of the trigger, I'm gonna kinda of point the top of it down a little bit and hope it slides forward, forward and out, there you go. It is a pretty snug fit, so if you kinda of get it bound up in there, just be careful with it. You don't wanna damage anything, just kinda of work it back, back and forth. All right, so we're gonna take our red infamous Nighthawk trigger here, and same thing, I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna to try to slide it up and back at the same time here. Up and back. If for some reason it won't fit, sometimes the Allen, screws, like the set screws that are in the trigger can be adjusted to sort of they're sticking out too much um, and they won't actually allow you to slide it in. So you may have to back a lot of these screws out in order to get it to fit. Before I put it in there, I wanna show you there are multiple screws on this. So the very front screw here is going to be for your, I believe your magnet. Yep, so there's a magnet inside your frame here. So that's basically like a uh, resistance for, or you like the return for your trigger. So that's gonna attract that screw and try to get it to pull up. So that's gonna be your return, your trigger return force. So if you don't like it to be real snappy, you can reduce that by screwing that screw further away from the magnet. Your second one in here is gonna be right here. That second screw is going to control, I guess the forward rake of your trigger. So as I screw this screw up, it's gonna press against the gun and start tilting that trigger more around this way. So it's gonna make that trigger pull less rake to the front. You have another one here in the back. This is gonna be your back stop. What that means is if you don't like a lot of room after you pull the trigger, let's say when it clicks and you shoots, if you don't like a lot of slop after that, this third screw here is gonna be the one that you're gonna to want to adjust. So this is going to hit the back. So as you pull the trigger, it's gonna do this way. It's gonna hit the actual gun itself. The frame on the inside is gonna stop the trigger. So once it clicks and fires, you can get it with it where it's a really short stop afterwards or where you have a lot of room afterwards. And then the bottom screw here, here at the bottom, is going to actually hit your micro switch inside. So it's gonna be right inside of here. Let's see if I can show you. Inside the frame here, you have a micro switch on the board. And so that screw goes into here and it clicks the micro switch right there. So that's gonna fire it. So those are your four. So your front, so you have one, two, three, four. I would recommend just from stock, put it in there and let's see where we're going right out of the box. So again, we're gonna take the trigger, slide it right into here. If you put it in an angle, it won't fit. You put it in too much bottom. So you're gonna to have to try to do it straight, uh, I guess parallel with the gun. Good to go there. <clears throat> Don't forget, I'm gonna show you a few settings, how to adjust it here in a second. So once you get it in there, drop your pin into place, and then you just wanna snug up the screw. You don't wanna to go too crazy. There are some O-rings on there, like I was saying, that will give it a little resistance, which is perfectly okay. And then I'm just gonna do it until my Allen key stops. Pull the trigger, and you're good to go. Okay, so that's the basic. To put your grips back on, just snap them back on place, top, and you're good to go. 
So technically your trigger will work, but if you want to get real uh, custom or real fine tuned with it, on this trigger particularly, there's a lot of slop. All that trigger pull happens before I accidentally pull it, before the trigger actually fires the gun. So it doesn't fire until way back there. You might be able to hear that but the trigger has all this room. So if I'm sitting there posted up and my finger's on the trigger, I have to pull all of this extra space before it actually fires. So I wanna get rid of that. And there's a couple ways of doing that. We can either screw this bottom screw closer to hitting the micro switch, or in addition to, we can actually, put the front screw, we can screw it up, sorry, the second screw, we can screw it up, so that way it actually pushes this trigger further to the back. And that's the first one I'm gonna mess with. Take the second screw there, and screw it down. And you should be able to slowly see the trigger go from there, more backwards there. Technically the front screw will do the same thing, but that's not what its main purpose is. Its main purpose is to increase or decrease the tension of the trigger. So I'm gonna screw this clockwise. So to the right, as I'm doing it, that's gonna screw the screw forward the top, towards the top of the body. <clears throat> You wanna make sure you have it fit in there correctly. So now, when I pull it, I just have a little bit of space. So between here and here, that's when the trigger actually clicks and that's the return of it. So I can even make it a little closer than that. So now that we've got it close, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this bottom screw here if I can. This one's kind of difficult because it's, it's hard to get a small Allen key in here. So sometimes I'll actually have to take it out of the gun or sometimes you can get it, if you have a ball head Allen key, it means it has a ball on the end of it, or a round end of it, you can get it in this way, but sometimes it won't work. So, that'll work, yep. So if you do this too much, the trigger won't actually actuate because it's already clicking the trigger. So I'm gonna see, be real careful with this. So if you can't, if you don't have a short enough Allen key to get in here, take the trigger off. Take the trigger off again and then adjust it. And all I'm gonna do is give it one full turn on that bottom screw. So you can see right here, the bottom screw is flush. I'm gonna take it and give it one full turn. So Allen key is, is there. We have one full turn around. There we go. Let's do it a couple times, see what we've got here. There we go. So if you can see the difference, now it's no longer flush. So that's gonna give us a little bit closer trigger pull. So if you overdo this a little bit, uh, you'll do it too much, but you can fine tune using the second Allen key. So now, I don't know if you can see that, but the second one is actually sticking out just a little, and that one's sticking out quite a bit. So I'm gonna slide it back in here. And you wanna make sure you have this main screw all the way in to make sure you're doing it right. So right now I have it too close. It actually won't pull the trigger, but that's okay. We can make those adjustments with our second one here. So I'm gonna back that out a little bit. So what it means right now is the trigger pull is moving or the trigger is moving, but it's not pushing that micro switch because it's already pushed the micro switch. It's already too far. So I'm gonna adjust the second screw out. You'll actually hear a click if this happens to you. So now I barely touch the trigger and it's gonna fire, there's very little play in there. So that's a pretty good trigger pull, I think so. You may not like the rake there. If you don't like that rake, then we'll pull it apart one more time and we'll push this trigger. So we can push it more towards the back like this. We just have to slowly adjust them. If you notice, I'm not adjusting the backstop. I personally, not a big fan of, I'm not real worried about backstop at all. But if you notice, like so right now, when I pull the trigger and then I, all this room is extra after the trigger pull. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I could do that as well. So that pretty much sums it up. It will take a little getting used to it and fine tuning it. Just remember if you're trying to force something or if it's not working correctly, stop, take 20 second break, put the gun down, go grab a glass of water, something like that, walk away from it. Um, you should never have to force anything on this. If it is, something's not going right. And you, of course you don't wanna break your gun or the micro switch. If you do damage the board on this gun, uh, you'll have to buy a new board. That's gonna be over a hundred dollars easily. So, 
If you do buy one of these from us, they do come with free installation. So bring it by, bring your gun by if you want to pick one up. We install it for free. That goes for any triggers, any upgrades for your gun, anything like that. These triggers are available on our website, ProAcePaintball.com. Of course, you have your red, you have your blue, your black, your gold, your purple, your pewter or gray, silver, and the only other color I'm missing is going to be pink. If you guys have any questions about installing this trigger or any other triggers for example any upgrades or if you have any feedback for other people that might be looking into this trigger go ahead and comment below tell them what you think maybe another recommendation of another trigger that they might like better uh, other than that thank you guys so much for watching again any questions comment below we'll see you next time